Do you have a history of white mold in your fields? Have you seen white mold yet this year? Well, I'm going to talk about it today. This is Dylan Mangel, Extension Plant Pathologist, and this is Infield Observations. White mold's been a consistent problem in Nebraska in the last couple years. It's actually gotten worse, and we've seen that our worst years tend to be odd years. So 2021 and 2023 were historically pretty bad, and the state right now in 2025 is set up again for record white mold losses in soybeans. Now these areas, it's specifically fields that have a history of the disease. It's the same fields in those odd years as they rotate from corn back into beans. And the reason is because that white mold will make a survival structure called a sclerotia that will stay on the soil surface and wait until a host is back in that field for it to grow. The bad part about these survival structures is they can survive for a long time. Uh, some reports up to a decade, those can just stay in that field. So we really should treat this problem as um, a persistent pest. Once you have it in a field, it's going to stay there and continue to be a problem. And management should happen accordingly. So I'm out today looking at fields and I'll walk around here and show you just some quick videos of what we're seeing. So the problem of white mold seems to be worse than thick beans. Here's a field that's on 15 inch rows and these are tall plants. If we go down and look in this canopy, uh, where we did see white mold mushrooms growing about a week ago when we got cool temperatures for a couple days, we can see how dense this is down here. That's a humidity sensor up there on the ground and a light sensor as part of our monitoring efforts. But what we can see here is that relative humidity down here is close to 100%, and we have white mold forming already on beans. Now, white mold infects through flowers. It infects at nodes where the flowers are. So you can see here an infection point. You can see here where there was a flower, there's another infection point, and it seems like it's grown up these secondary stems first, and you can see the white mold growing on the stem. This plant's gonna continue to get more and more severely impacted until it's likely gonna die. At this point though, there's likely very little spread from this white mycelium or white fungus growing on the plant to other plants around it. That's gonna be limited. The majority of the spread happened when the spores released from the mushrooms, which would have been on the soil surface or mushroom-like structures called apothecia, and have spread onto the plants. Now, while we don't see many of these plants infected, they're likely latent infections and are gonna to continue to appear worse and they'll look like they're getting worse and maybe convince you or make you think you wanna go apply a fungicide application. But the focus should be on early applications that are gonna prevent that initial infection. Those are the most economical returns for application. So if you're thinking about applying, there's still a chance that your fields are early enough if you've got a history of white mold that you're gonna have an economical fungicide application. If you've already made one fungicide application and you're considering a follow-up, you should probably focus that before you get too late in the R stages. Maybe R3 as a follow-up application if you did a late R1 or early R2 initial application. The last thing I want to warn against are rescue treatments. Once you have a field that's showing heavy symptoms and you're late in the season, think mid-August or so, uh, or mid to late August, very unlikely that a rescue treatment or a fungicide application or an application of any product on white mold infected plants is going to make a difference at that point. If you'd like more information on white mold management and soybeans in Nebraska, please go online to cropwatch.unl.edu. And thanks again for watching Infield Observations.